A little while back, we named the best NBA starting five from every continent. In this video, we're going to take it one step further and name the best NBA full roster from every continent. That's five reserve players, five bench players, five starters, and one coach. As usual, I do have a few quick rules that I need to set before naming the rosters. First is defining the continents and who goes where. The continents are North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Oceania, Asia, and possibly Antarctica. Now, some countries are up for debate on which continent they belong in. Take, for example, Turkey and Russia. These countries are geographically both in Asia and Europe, but I will allow them to participate on Team Asia since Team Europe already has so much competition. The second rule is how a player can represent a country. For example, Giannis can represent either Greece slash Europe or Nigeria slash Africa. I will place the player on the best possible roster to give them the best opportunity to win. However, it is one player per continent, no doubles. For for a player to represent a country slash continent, they either have to be born there or have a direct ancestry. With these NBA players also playing in different countries, one of the best ways to keep up with their international game is with NordVPN. If you want access to your home content while traveling abroad or vice versa, NordVPN can help. For example, if you live in the United States but want to catch up on exclusive Netflix content from Japan, Canada, or France, NordVPN is the safest and easiest way to do it. With NordVPN, you can also access live matches that are not aired in your country and games from international leagues or even watch YouTube highlights that are specific to a certain country. By using a VPN to go through proper channels legally, you can avoid using illegal streaming sites that may lead to hacking or viruses. Speaking of safety, NordVPN can protect your internet connection and maintain your privacy online. Plus, NordVPN can encrypt your IP address so you can connect to public networks, or any network really, with a peace of mind. A password-protected Wi-Fi network alone will not protect you from potential hackers or malware. If you use public Wi-Fi regularly, want to access content from around the world, want to stay safe online, or are an avid gamer, then NordVPN is right for you. Go to nordvpn.com slash rebound rewind to get 70% off a two-year plan plus one additional month free for only $3.56 a month. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. You can do this by clicking the top link down below. This is a limited time offer, so make sure you click that link. You don't want to miss out on this deal. Thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this video. That point guard is Facundo Campazzo. Facundo is from Argentina who is a solid point guard and he could come off the bench giving you roughly 6 points per game. At shooting guard we got Oscar Torres from Venezuela who is a fair backup shooting guard. At small forward we got Gabriel Deck from Argentina. He's more of a power forward but I think he's fast enough to play the 3 position and can give you 6 points a night. At power forward is Bruno Cabloco from Brazil. He has 7 years of NBA experience so far and is a reserve forward who can play three positions, the three, the four, and sometimes the five. At center, we have Cristiano Felicio from Brazil. He's a reserve center who can come off the bench and give you some consistent rebounding. Even though he only plays about 14 minutes per game, he can still give you almost four rebounds in such a short time. Now for our second unit, the bench. At point guard, we got Raul Neto from Brazil. Raul is coming off his best season yet, putting up roughly eight points per game. He's a good backup point guard who, if given starter minutes, I think can be a solid starter. At shooting guard, we got Gravis Vasquez from Venezuela. During his prime, Vasquez was a legitimate starter who can give you nearly 14 points per game. He's more of a point guard, but thanks to his 6'6 stature and size, he can easily play the two spot. At small forward is Carlos Delfino from Argentina. Carlos during his prime with the Bucks was a great wing player who can play a two-way game. He was a solid scorer who can consistently give you over 11 points per game. He had range and can guard positions 1 through 3. At power forward is Andres Nocioni from Argentina. Andres came off the bench for most of his career, but he had some starting seasons during his prime. In his best season, he put up over 14 points per game and over 10 points per game throughout his career. At center, we got Tiago Splitter from Brazil. Tiago is a starting center on a playoff team, so him coming off the bench shows just how strong the South American front court is. He is a 2014 champ, and his two-way game is what makes him great. He can score down low and is a solid rebounder. 
And now for our starters, at point guard is Leandro Barbosa from Brazil. Leandro was the 2007 sixth man and a 2015 champion. While he never made an all-star team, during his prime, I can see him as an all-star caliber player as he put up over 18 points per game during his best scoring season. At shooting guard, we got Emmanuel Ginobili from Argentina. Speaking of sixth men, Manu is one of the best to ever win the award. He's a four-time champ, two-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA, and an All-Rookie player who put up nearly 20 points per game in his best season coming off the bench. Since he is the primary scorer on this team, I can easily see him score close to 25 points per game with starters minutes and more touches. At small forward is Luis Scola from Argentina. Scola was a solid NBA player who was a 2008 All-Rookie, and in his best scoring season, he put up over 18 points per game and easily over 15 points per game throughout his prime in the NBA. At power forward is Anderson Vedejao from Brazil. The wild thing is an all-defensive player as well as an insane rebounder. In his best scoring and rebounding season, he averaged 14 points and 14 rebounds. Had he been healthier during his prime, he could have had a much better resume. At center, we got Nene from Brazil. Nene is an all-rookie player who easily averaged over 14 points per game throughout his prime. He also was a solid rebounder and an efficient player with a 61% field goal percentage during his best percentage season. The head coach of Team South America is going to be Pablo Prigioni from Argentina, who is currently the assistant coach of the Minnesota Timberwolves. Team South America has a great defensive and offensive rebounding front court and a lot of firepower in their back court. The stats on some players might fool you. With two sixth men of the year getting starters minutes and primary scoring options, I can easily see Leandro and Ginobili fill up the need for scoring. Can this team make the playoffs? Certainly. Can this team make the finals? That is hard to say. This team does not have a legitimate MVP caliber talent, but it does have all-star caliber talent. Manu is the closest to MVP caliber. While I can see him as a franchise player, it is hard to say that he's an undisputed MVP. Ranking in sixth place is Team Oceana. Let's start with the reserves. At point guard is Josh Green from Australia. Josh has a lot of room to grow as he's only in his second season as of this upload. He's a rotation player who can give you four points per game. At shooting guard is Ryan Brokoff from Australia. Ryan may find his way into the NBA once again in the future. He played from 2018 through 2020 and he's only 31 as of this upload. He's a rotation player who can give you about four points per game as well. At small forward is Mitch Creek from Australia. Mitch Creek hardly played in the NBA with only five total games, but there aren't a lot of Oceana NBA players, so he's able to make the squad due to scarcity. At power forward is David Anderson from Australia. David spent about two seasons in the NBA and was a rotation player who can give you five points per game. At center is Jock Landale from Australia. Jock is only a rookie, but he has potential to develop into a solid starter. He's currently a rotation player, but he can give you five points per game. And now for the second unit bench. At point guard is Matthew Deladova from Australia. Delhi is a great defender who helped the Cavs win a title in 2016. Delhi really showcased his defense in the 2015 finals when Kyrie Irving got injured and Delhi had to step up to the plate to guard Steph Curry. At shooting guard is Dante Exum from Australia. Dante Exum was hyped to become an all-star caliber player, but he turned out to be a role player. While you can argue he's a bust by projection standards, as a player in a vacuum, he is an average batter backup combo guard. At small forward is Josh Giddy from Australia. Josh is just a rookie as of this upload, but he can easily develop into an all-star caliber talent or at the very least a really valuable starting caliber player who can provide a scoring punch and playmaking. He's putting up 11 points per game, 6 assists, and 7.5 rebounds. At power forward we got Aaron Baines from New Zealand. Aaron is a 2014 champ as he won playing for the Spurs. He's a good backup center. I have him playing the 4 as I prefer the next player at the 5. At center we got Luke Longley from Australia. Luke is a 3 time Bulls champ who 3 peated with the goat of the sport MJ. In his best scoring season he put up over 11 points per game and was a solid starter in the NBA's toughest era. And now for Oceana's starters. At point guard we got Patty Mills from Australia. Patty is a really underrated point guard who is a great 3 point shooter and a 2014 NBA champ. He put up almost 12 points per game in his best scoring season and almost 9 points per game throughout his career. At shooting guard we got Kyrie Irving who was born in Australia. While Kyrie Irving represents America at the Olympic level, he was still born in Australia 
and has an Australian citizenship. Kyrie is one of the best point guards of all time, and easily one of the best ball handlers of all time. Plus, he's an NBA champion. At small forward is Ben Simmons from Australia. While Ben technically plays the point guard in the NBA, I put him on the front court on this starting five due to his size and the fact that Kyrie and Patty fit better in the backcourt. Ben so far is a three-time All-Star, Rookie of the Year, a steals champ, and a two-time All-Defensive player. At power forward, we got Steven Adams from New Zealand. Aquaman is a great two-way player who can give you double-digit scoring, nearly double-digit rebounding, while also protecting the rim, putting up one block and one steal per game. In his best scoring season, he put up nearly 14 points per game. At center, we got Andrew Bogut from Australia. Bogut is a 2015 champ, a block champion, All-Defensive player, All-Rookie player, and an All-NBA player. He put up over 15 points points per game during his best scoring season and 2.6 blocks during his best blocking season. The head coach for Team Oceana is going to be Damian Cotter from Australia. He's currently the assistant coach for the Chicago Bulls. As stated in previous videos, Team Oceana might have more problems off the court than on the court. If Ben Simmons and Kyrie can find a way to stay on the court, this team has a lot to be excited about. The biggest issue this team might have would be spacing, but of course depth, especially the second unit and the reserves. With that in mind, I do see a lot of iso ball with Kyrie Irving since the starting front court has a lot of great defenders. I do have Oceana ahead of South America due to its star power and iso talent. Once again, Kyrie Irving is surrounded by a lot of great defenders, so this team can be tough to score on, and Uncle Drew can provide a scoring punch that this team would require. But with a bench and reserve that do run thin, it would be hard to have them be ranked higher. This team can make the playoffs and possibly possibly make a deep playoff run, it's hard to say if this is truly a championship caliber team. Landing in 5th place is Team Asia, starting with the reserves, at point guard we got Cam Thomas born in Japan. Cam is only a rookie and he has a really bright future ahead of him, he's a solid role player who can give you nearly 7 points per game and recently hit a game winner proving he's a clutch player who can play under pressure. At shooting guard we got Yuta Watanabe who is from Japan. Yuta Watanabe is actually just starting to improve his game. He's playing his best basketball right now and he's only been in the league for roughly four seasons. He's a solid role player who can give you over 7 points per game. At small forward, we got Jetty Osman from Turkey. Jetty is a great offensive talent who can give you double digit scoring in just 20 minutes. He's also a great range shooter, shooting 40% from beyond the arc. You can see him smiling amongst other legends in this very photo. At power forward, we got Rui Hachimura from Japan. While he's only played two full NBA seasons so far, he's got a really promising future ahead of him if he continues to improve and can stay healthy. He's averaging almost 14 points per game and was a 2020 All-Rookie player. He only played one game so far this 2022 season due to injury. At center we got Yi Jianlian from China. Yi is more of a stretch four type power forward, but he's certainly tall enough to play the center at 7 feet tall. He's fast enough to guard small forwards, and he's tall enough to guard centers and power forwards. Plus, he does have average 3 point shooting range. He was hyped to be the next Yao Ming, but couldn't live up to all-star expectations. However, he was an above average starting caliber player who can give you 12 points per night and over 7 rebounds during his best season. Now for the bench, at point guard we got Steve Kerr from Lebanon. Steve Kerr was born in Beirut, Lebanon. He's one of the best 3 point shooters the game has ever seen. He's a 5 time player champ and a 3 time coach champ so far. At shooting guard we got Jalen Green from the Philippines. Jalen is only a rookie as of this upload, but he has an extremely promising future. I can easily see him start on this continent's team when he hits his prime. He's already putting up over 15 points per game and has solid 3 point shooting range. At small forward we got Hidu Turkoglu from Turkey. Turkoglu is the 2008 most improved player who put up over 19 points per game in his best scoring season. While he's never made an all star team, he's played at a near all star level for many seasons. At power forward is Tom Mascheri from China. Tom was born in China, but he's of Russian descent. He's an extremely underrated player who was an all-star for one season. In his all-star season, he put up over 16 points per game and almost 10 rebounds. At center is Mehmet Okur from Turkey. Mehmet is an NBA all-star and an NBA champion. He averaged 18 points per game during his prime, and he's a solid rebounder who can give you over 9 rebounds at his best. And now for the starters. At point guard, we got Jeremy Lin from Taiwan. Jeremy Lin's parents are of Taiwan. 
Taiwanese descent and Jeremy himself holds a Chinese citizenship. Jeremy is a 2019 NBA champ and during Lin's sanity, he was averaging 26.8 points per game for a short period of time. In his best scoring season, he put up over 14 points per game and almost 12 points per game throughout his career. While he was never a designated all-star, at his best, he can play near or at an all-star level. Also quick note, a lot of people thought I skipped over Lin in the previous starting five video, but what really happened was that video got copyright claimed and the Lin highlights had to be clipped out. Moving on, at shooting guard is Jordan Clarkson from the Philippines. During Clarkson's 2021 season, he won sixth man of the year while putting up over 18 points per game coming off the bench. He's consistently averaged over 15 points per game throughout his career and is a great three-point shooter. At small forward, we got Andrei Karolinko from Russia. AK-47 is an NBA All-Star, a block champ, all-rookie, and a three-time all-defensive player. He put up nearly 17 points per game in his best scoring season and 3.3 blocks per game in his best blocking season. He can guard positions one through four. He's fast enough to guard small forwards and guards, plus he's big enough to guard power forwards. At power forward, we got Ronnie Cycli from from Lebanon. Cycli is a Miami Heat legend who won the Most Improved Player Award in 1990. During his best scoring season, he put up over 17 points per game and he helped lead his team to multiple playoff appearances. While he was never designated to an all-star team, he's played at an all-star caliber level during his prime and proved he can lead his team to the postseason. At center, we got Yao Ming from China. Yao was an all-star for every single season he played in the NBA. Not only is he an eight-time All-Star, he's also a five-time All-NBA player. He put up over 25 points per game during his best scoring season, and if he didn't run into injuries, he could have easily had a much longer career with a much better resume. The head coach for Team Asia is going to be Eric Spolstra from the Philippines. Spolstra is the first Asian-American head coach in the history of the four major North American pro sports leagues, and the first Asian-American head coach to win an NBA championship. Overall, I have Team Asia ahead of Oceana because they have way more two-way weapons and depth. Team Oceana only has two designated All-Stars, but Team Asia has four designated All-Stars. However, I will say that on an individual talent level, you can argue that Kyrie Irving is better than any one player on Team Asia. Team Asia's bench and reserves are what's going to carry this team over teams like Oceania and South America. You got two all-stars coming off the bench to provide great two-way games and two all-stars in the starting five. I can see Team Asia make deep playoff runs and make the finals, but it's hard to say if this is a championship caliber team. They do have four all-stars, but only one franchise player caliber all-star in Yao Ming. For example, the 2015 Hawks had four all-stars, but weren't able to win a chip. Next up is Team Africa. Africa. Let's start with the reserves. At point guard, we got Josh Okogi from Nigeria. Josh is a great defensive talent. If you look at his stat sheet, you might overlook how good he truly is on the court. His defense is what makes him so valuable as he can easily guard positions one through three. At shooting guard, we got Jordan Wara from Nigeria. Jordan is currently in his second season and is already showing signs of improvement. He's averaging nearly nine points per game while coming off the bench. His minutes are increasing and he can develop into a starter's caliber talent if he continues to improve. At small forward, we got Luke Mbatamute from Cameroon. Luke is an NBA veteran who knows the game well and is a great defender who can guard wing players and power forwards. He's athletic and while he's not an elite scorer, he can give you respectable seven points per game. At power forward, we got Gorgi Jang from Senegal. Senegal. Gorgie Jeng is an elite rim protector who put up nearly two blocks per game in his best blocking season. His defense is what allowed him to have a long NBA career spanning over 10 seasons and counting. His scoring is pretty solid as well as he can give you a consistent seven points per game. At center we got Manute Bol from South Sudan. Speaking of elite rim protection and defense, we have one of the tallest players in NBA history, Manute Bol. Manute once averaged an insane five blocks per game. He's an all-defensive player. Rest in peace to Manute Bowl. Moving on to the bench, at point guard we got Victor Oladipo from Nigeria. Victor is a two-time All-Star who could be rocking the NBA as we speak if he didn't run into injury trouble these past few seasons. In his best season, he put up over 23 points per game and was also a steals champion grabbing 2.4 steals per game. At shooting guard we got Monte Morris from Nigeria. Monte is recently stepping up his game this season as he's a fully-fledged starter putting up nearly 13 points 
points per game. He's a great scorer with great three-point shooting range. At small forward is Kalana Azubuki from Nigeria. During Kalana's prime, he was playing near an all-star level, giving you nearly 15 points per game, about one block and one steal. He's a solid two-way player who can guard positions one through three. He has the length to guard wings and the speed to guard backcourt players. At power forward, we got Pascal Siakam from Cameroon. Pascal is an NBA All-Star, a champion, All-NBA player, and a most improved player. Currently, he's putting up over 20 points per game, and with a 7-3 wingspan, he is a great defender who can guard nearly all five positions. At center, we got Dikimbi Mutombo from the Democratic Republic of the Congo. Dikimbi is one of the best defensive players in NBA history. He's a four-time Defensive Player of the Year, six-time All-Defensive, three-time Block Champ, two-time Total Rebound Champ, three-time All-NBA, and an eight-time All-Star. The only reason he's not the starting center on this team is because the starting center is pretty much GOAT status. Moving on, we have the starters, and at point guard, it's Steve Nash, born in South Africa. While Steve is a Canadian citizen, he was born in the country of South Africa and the continent of Africa. Steve is one of the best point guards of all time. He's a two-time MVP, five-time assist champ, and an eight-time All-Star. At shooting guard, it's Luol Deng from South Sudan. During his prime, Luol was an extremely underrated player. He was a great two-way player who could not only score, but on the defensive end, he can lock down any opposing team's best score. He's a two-time All-Star and an All-Defensive player. He put up roughly 19 points per game during his best scoring season. At small forward, we got Andre Iguodala from Nigeria. While Andre is only half Nigerian, he is of Nigerian descent and thus still qualifies. He's a legitimate All-Star during his prime with the Sixers and a Finals MVP during his time with the Warriors. At power forward, we got Joel Embiid from Cameroon. Joel has a bright future ahead of him. He's only played a few seasons, but he's still done quite a bit as he's a four-time All-Star, three-time All-NBA, and a three-time All-Defensive player so far. At center, we got Akeem Olajuwon from Nigeria. Akeem the Dream is one of the best centers of all time and one of the best NBA players of all time, period. He's a 12-time All-Star, two-time champ, two-time Finals MVP, nine-time All-Defensive player, two-time Defensive Player of the Year, and a 12-time All-NBA player. The head coach of Team Africa is going to be Ime Udoka from Nigeria. Ime is the current coach of the Boston Celtics. Team Africa has eight All-Stars, two MVPs, and two final MVPs so far. It's no question that this team is a dynasty caliber championship team. This team has depth and defense for days. I don't need to explain to you why this team is great or why they would easily beat Team Asia, Oceania, or South America. Moving on, we got Team Europe starting with the reserves. At point guard, it's Goran Dragic from Slovenia. Goran is an NBA All-Star and an All-NBA player who can not only score, but is an even better playmaker. During his prime, he put over 20 points per game. At shooting guard, we got Vlade Divac from Serbia. Vlade is a Hall of Famer and an All-Star who is a great two-way player, but he's really more of a front court player. Since since he is a reserve on this team, he can get away with being out of position. At small forward, we got Kiki Vandewey from Germany. Kiki is a two-time All-Star who put up nearly 30 points per game as a secondary option for the Nuggets during the 1980s. He is one of the most underrated players in NBA history. At power forward, we got Marcus All from Spain. Marcus All is a three-time All-Star, two-time All-NBA, NBA champ, and a Defensive Player of the Year. He's a great two-way player, but he's better on defense. At center we got Rudy Gobert from France. Rudy is an all-star, all-NBA, block champ, five-time all-defensive, and three-time defensive player of the year so far. He's a solid scorer, but a much better defender. Next up is the second unit bench, and at point guard, we got Drazen Petrovic from Yugoslavia and Croatia. Drazen is a Hall of Fame legend who is also an all-NBA player. How this man didn't make an all-star team is beyond me. He put up over 22 points per game in his best scoring season and is a great three-point shooter. Rest in peace to Drazen Petrovic. At shooting guard, we got Peza Stojakovic from Serbia. Peza is a three-time All-Star, All-NBA player, and an NBA champ. He's a great scorer with great range and a solid defensive player who can guard positions one through three. At small forward is Dominique Wilkins from France. Dominique was born in France and is one of the best scorers the game has ever seen. He is a scoring champion, a nine-time All-Star, and a seven-time All-NBA player. The human highlight film put up over 30 points per game in his best scoring season and for multiple seasons. At power forward is Pau Gasol from 
Spain. Pau is a Laker legend, he's a six-time All-Star, four-time All-NBA, two-time NBA champ, and a Rookie of the Year. He's a solid defender, but a much better scorer. At center, it's Joachim Noah from France. Joachim is a three-time All-Defensive, two-time All-Star, an All-NBA player, and a Defensive Player of the Year. He's a solid scorer, but a much, much better defender. And now for the starters. At point guard, we got Tony Parker from France. Tony Parker is a six-time All-Star, four-time All-NBA, four-time champ, and a Finals MVP. He's the best point guard in Spurs history. At shooting guard, it's Luka Doncic from Slovenia. Luka has a huge career ahead of him. He's probably not even in his prime yet, but plays much better than most players his age. Luka so far has made multiple All-Star teams, multiple All-NBA teams, and averages over 25 points per game. At small forward is Giannis Antetokounmpo from Greece. The Greek freak Giannis Antetokounmpo is one of the best players on the planet in the current NBA. He's an MVP, Defensive Player of the Year, and a Finals MVP. At power forward, it's Dirk Nowitzki from Germany. Dirk is a 14-time All-Star, 2007 MVP, and a 2011 champ. Plus, he's a Finals MVP. Dirk is the best Maverick in NBA history so far. At center is Nikola Jokic from Serbia. The Joker is one of the most efficient MVPs in NBA history. He's a center with great spacing and range. Not only can he score down low, but he can score from beyond the arc. The head coach of Team Europe is Mike D'Antoni from Italy. While Mike was born in the United States, he was born to Italian parents and has a dual US and Italian citizenship. Team Europe has either an all-star or an all-NBA player on every single roster spot. They have three MVPs in Nikola, Dirk, and Giannis so far. They have three finals MVPs in Dirk, Giannis, and Tony Parker so far. While you can argue Team Africa has better defense, they mainly have better post defense. When it comes to perimeter defense, it will be really tough to stop Team Europe from scoring beyond the three-point line, especially when they have bigs who can hit threes like Dirk, Giannis, and the Joker. Team Europe has more depth than Team Africa, but both teams are championship caliber and dynasty caliber. And then there's the dream team. Team North America, starting with the reserves. Point guard Isaiah Thomas, born in Chicago, Illinois. Isaiah is the third best point guard of all time. At shooting guard, it's Dwayne Wade, born in Chicago, Illinois. Wade is the third best shooting guard of all time. At small forward, it's Charles Barkley, born in Leeds, Alabama. Charles is easily a top 10 forward in NBA history. At power forward, it's Kevin Garnett, born in Greenville, South Carolina. The big ticket is easily a top 5 power forward in NBA history. At center, it's Shaquille O'Neal. Neil born in Newark, New Jersey. Shaq is the fourth best center of all time. With our bench, we got point guard Steph Curry born in Akron, Ohio. Steph is the second best point guard of all time. He may soon be the first, who knows. At shooting guard, we got Kobe Bryant born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Kobe is the second best shooting guard of all time. Rest in peace to the Mamba. At small forward, it's Larry Bird, born in West Baton Springs, Indiana. Larry is the second best small forward of all time. At power forward, it's Kevin Durant, born in Washington, D.C. Kevin Durant is easily a top five forward in NBA history. At center, it's Wilt Chamberlain, born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Wilt is the second best center of all time. Rest in peace to Wilt Chamberlain. And now for the starters. At point guard, we got Magic. Magic Johnson, born in Lansing, Michigan. Magic is the best point guard of all time. At shooting guard, it's Michael Jordan, who was born in Brooklyn, New York, but grew up in North Carolina. Jordan is the best NBA player of all time. At small forward, it's LeBron James, born in Akron, Ohio. LeBron is the best small forward of all time. At power forward, it's Tim Duncan, born in St. Croix, U.S. Virgin Islands. Duncan is the best power forward of all time. At center, it's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, born in New York, New York. Kareem is the best center of all time. The head coach of Team North America is Phil Jackson, born in Deer Lodge, Montana. Phil is the best NBA coach of all time with 11 rings. As far as NBA players go, this is a super team of super teams. You got 13 MVPs, 13 finals MVPs, and North America has so many MVPs and all-stars that you can probably wipe these players and still have a team that makes it on top, as this is 
easily a championship and dynasty caliber team. And last but not least, in first place is Team Antarctica, starting with the reserves. At point guard, it's Raymond the Penguin. He's the leader of the Amigos, and he has quite the stand-up routine. At shooting guard, it's Seymour. Don't push him because he's close to the edge. At small forward, it's Lovelace. Not only is he a love guru, but he's also a basketball guru. He will lace you up and cross you over. At power forward, it's Glenn Maverick. Surf's up, you will get washed up if you try to post up Glenn Maverick. At center, it's Tank Evans. Tank is simply built different. He's simply built different. And now for the bench. At point guard, it's Private. Private is an underrated legend. Opposing teams will underestimate him, but that's their biggest mistake. At shooting guard, it's Cody Maverick. Also surfs up. You will get washed up if you try to post up Cody Maverick. At small forward, it's Rocco. Rocco has a rocky game, but what's more rocky is trying to beat him in the key. At power forward, it's Hubie. Some players chase rings. But Hubie's got a pebble that's worth more than any of Kevin Durant's super team rings. At center, it's Drake. Drake will not only steal your girl, he will also steal your ball. Your game ball, that is. Don't let him touch your other balls. And now for the starters. At point guard, it's Skipper. He's the team captain and coach on the court. At shooting guard, it's Pablo. He's one of the best backcourt backyardigans out there. At small forward, it's Pingu. No one understands his words, but they do understand his game. Game. At power forward, it's Rico. He can swallow any defense his way. At center, it's Mumble. He's got the best footwork in the game. The head coach for Team Antarctica is Kowalski. His analysis is second to none, and he will always have the best game plan to ensure his team wins. Team Antarctica is so cool, every player has ice water in their veins. So here's the best roster from every continent. Let me know what you think of these lineups, and feel free to rank each team from least best to best. Don't forget to dunk on that like button and subscribe with notifications turned on. I'm Rebound Rewind, and I'll fast forward to you later.